So I'm talking right now with uh, Charles Billingsley. He's a, a singer, a songwriter. Uh, a lot of you might remember him from when he was with New Song. Uh, and also now he's, he's back in, um, in Lynchburg, Virginia at Thomas Road Baptist Church and was previously at, at Shadow Mountain out in California for a couple of years. Uh, so thank you, uh, Charles, for joining us and talking a little bit about your journey with COVID-19. So can you tell us just how you're doing now? Hey, thanks, Trey, for having me. Um, well, I'll tell you this, uh, I am light years better than I was mm -hmm. even a week ago. It's been quite a journey, man. I, I had this virus for at least 24 days that we know of. Um, and uh, it's a vicious cycle, man. This thing grabs hold and, and doesn't let go very well. But uh, this past Monday, four, five days ago now, uh, I was uh, tested and it came back negative. And so, praise God, I don't have the virus anymore, although I'm still yeah. dealing with the, you know, the double pneumonia and some of the pain in my legs from some blood clots and things like that that this thing does to you. Man, this thing will mess you up. So I know for a lot of us, I mean, myself included, it's kind of, we see it on TV, we hear about it on podcasts, people who have been impacted by it, but it's fairly foreign, I think, to a lot of, a lot of Americans because they haven't been touched by it, thankfully. Um, yeah. but, but you've been battling it for, like you said, north of, of 20 days now. Um, yeah. What, can you just give me a breakdown of the timeline? When were you hospitalized? When did you start to feel like, okay, this, this might be it? Sure. Well, we were at dinner with some friends of ours for our 26th anniversary. And that night I started feeling a fever. And then for the next several days after that, I had a fever. And finally went into the doctor just to get tested for the flu. Cause I, I thought, well, there's no way I have, you know, coronavirus, no, yeah. there, you know, nobody in the area had coronavirus or nothing. And uh, I came back negative for the flu. And so then he tested me for that, sent it off. And on April 1st, April Fool's Day, he called me that morning and said it came back positive. Mm. Well, to be honest with you, you know, because we hear all the stories. I mean, 85% of the cases are mild. They don't last long. It's not a big deal. And I really just kind of thought, well, I'll get over this fever and that'll be it, you know. But after, I don't know, I guess it was nine days of 102, 103 degree temperatures and horrible <laughs> aches and pains. I'm sorry. No, no problem horrible aches and pains uh it, my uh, <laughs> it just got worse and the, that's the problem this virus is it, you get about eight or nine days in and you think you're done and that's when it's just getting started hmm. and that's when it began to move towards my lungs and my breathing became really labored and my doctor came over and it, he had done some blood work on me and he came over one afternoon it was on april um april 9th and this is, now I've been into this thing now for what, 12 days or something. Yeah. And he goes, man, I got to tell you, your blood work is horrible. He said, your liver, your kidneys, your, he said, man, this, this is not looking good. And he said, let me listen to your lungs. And he listened to my lungs. And he said, look, uh, I don't, I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to have to put you in the hospital right now. Wow. And that's when it got a little scary. Yeah. And uh, and I got real frustrated and, and real disappointed because I thought I was going to just tackle this thing, you know, and it just kept getting worse. And so I went into the hospital immediately and was there for about two and a half days. And, and uh, those were two of the worst days of my life, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the people there are, are wonderful. You know, they, they're working so hard. And, and, you know, it's a horrible thing because these poor nurses and doctors, you know, they're, they're, they're right in the middle of this mess. Yeah. And, they, and people don't realize, you know, they have to come in with all the shield and all the garb and everything just right. to see me for five minutes. But then they have to take all of that off, put it in a bin, and then go outside your room and put a whole new batch of all that stuff on to go to the next room. Hmm. And I mean, what they go through on a daily basis is unbelievable. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the reason I was there was really more for precautionary reasons um, because of the oxygen situation. They told me, they said, look, here's the problem. That once you start downhill, if you're, if you're not near a ventilator or, or near a hospital, you, you won't make it more than 30 minutes. Wow. 
Wow. And my oxygen levels were, were low enough to where I was just this close to having to go on oxygen. And then the next step, of course, is, is more serious, like ventilator and all that stuff. Mm. But thankfully, uh, praise be to God, I never, I never got to that point. I stayed right around 90 and 89 on my oxygen, which is right on the cusp of having to, you know, go to the next level. Yeah. And um, by the third day in the hospital, I, I just told the doctor, I said, look, uh, all I'm doing here is taking Tylenol and watching my oxygen. And uh, I think I'd, I'd just as soon do that from home. Yeah. And the doctor warned me, he said, well, you know, we're not a prison. Right. But he said, but you just need to know the risks. Yeah. And I said, well, I guess that's a risk I'm willing to take because I, I really just wanted to be home for Easter. And, I'm, and so I, I, I took a little bit of a risk heading, um, <laughs> leaving the hospital. But, um, you know, thankfully, each day has gotten a little better. And I had a lot of pain in my legs from what we think was blood clots in the capillaries and things like that. But, but thankfully, um, each day has gotten a little better. And, and after about 24 days is when I really noticed a good turnaround. And, and now, you know, I'm uh, about 29 days into this thing, and I finally am starting to feel almost, almost back to normal. I'm still really yeah. weak. I lost 20 something pounds, and you know, and all that. But it's, uh, it's so much better than it was, and, I, and I'm so grateful. And let me ask you, as a pastor, so many people I, I know turn to you for encouragement. Uh, and and just help uh, spiritually as they walk through you know this season that everyone is is struggling with but i mean to be in the the uh, the dark place that you were because i'm sure there were times when you're angry at god when you're confused when you didn't understand uh, why this was happening I, how did you cope with that yourself well uh i'll be honest with you the first several days i coped with it really well um, and then you reach a point of frustration. Yeah. You know, I, I kept praying that the Lord would heal me. In fact, um, I, I had some really uh, interesting moments in the hospital just between me and the Lord because, you know, I, I really, I really was claiming Luke and, and, and just claiming all these scriptures about how the Lord will heal you if you just ask him. And I, and I really believed that the Lord was just going to heal me right there on the spot in the hospital. And I was just going to rip those cords out of me and just walk out and say, hey, sorry, guys, but the Lord healed me. I'm done. But that's not what he chose to do. And I got real frustrated. And, um, and I'm, in, I'm embarrassed to say that I got real angry uh, with the Lord because he, 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 he wasn't healing me like I thought he should. Mm. and uh and uh i'll tell you i felt so so convicted over that for so many days uh and and almost embarrassed but um that i tell you this thing will do a number on you mentally as much as it does physically yeah and uh and and, and through the process I, I'll, I'll be honest with you um i'm, I'm coming out of the, the other side of this thing having learned a great deal of patience um mm. You know, you, you don't want to pray for patience because the Lord will do things in your life to, to cause you to learn it the hard way. Yeah. Um, I, I got frustrated because I was one of the very few people in this whole region that even has this thing. I, I was frustrated because, you know, why, why me? You know, you go through all that stuff, right? Sure. But now that I've come out on the other side, I mean, even, even a week removed from it, I'm looking back and reflecting on all this, and I'm thankful for uh the incredible incredible moments of worship that i had just between me and the lord mm -hmm. and uh, one thing that it's done is it's just sort of made me um regret all those moments in my life when i worshiped the lord and was a little inhibited because of maybe what people think or or because of the the environment i was in or whatever and uh I'll tell you, Trey, uh, I just don't care anymore. I'm, I'm just going to worship the Lord with reckless abandon. I don't really, uh, it doesn't matter to me what people think anymore. Yeah. And so I may come across as a little bit uh, too fiery or too passionate, but um, 
You know, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, like, uh, like David talked about, uh, you come out of the other side so grateful and so thankful and yeah. just so full of um, gratitude to the Lord that it'll, it'll make you worship in a whole different way. Wow. And in, in the midst of, of all of that, and uh, what, a, what a powerful testimony, I think. Uh, and, and just now in talking to you, I can see uh, the way it's changed you. And, and maybe, that's, maybe that's God's plan and purpose. We don't always, we don't always know what it, what it is. Uh, but, but I think that testimony, I mean, it speaks to me, and I know it'll speak to so many. Um, but in the middle of it, you had an album come out. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, timing. so you know, you're in in the middle of this, and the the name of the album, "I Was Made for This," and and it's got all kinds of songs of, about God's character in it. I mean, the 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 timing of of the the lyrics to the songs couldn't have been uh, couldn't be a coincidence in my mind. So how how have you how have you dealt with that too? <laughs> Man, I mean, Trey, we wrote those songs last fall. So, you know, who knew that in, in all this, and, and we even delayed the release of the record two months because we were slow getting in the master. So who, who knew in all that, that somehow, some way God would orchestrate this deal to where when my record comes out, I'm laying alone in a hospital bed with the coronavirus. But man, you know, one thing I did that, well, both nights in the hospital is I, I listened to this record mm. and man, just even having written half the songs, man, this record took on a whole new meaning to me. Um, the lyrics of some of the songs like where you're supposed to be and sing for my soul. And even, even the remake we did like Kyrie, yeah. uh, which means Lord have mercy on this journey that I'm walking down. I mean, every song on that record, and then some of the more worshipful moments like King of Glory and, and Spirit of God. I mean, those songs really spoke to me um, in a whole new light. And, and so I, I just thought, wow, the, <laughs> the timing of this is um, incredible. I mean, I, I mean, who on earth could have ever planned this? Yeah. But, but I, again, you know, God just orchestrated this whole thing this way. And, uh, you know, maybe six months, a year from now, we'll look back and understand why. But I will say um, the time, the timeliness of some of the lyrics of these songs um, are, are so right for this season that I really hope that the, the songs will bless a lot of people. And my last question for you is just for people who are walking through maybe a, a diagnosis of with COVID themselves or if they uh, are 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 working through that with a loved one or they've lost a loved one uh, to this virus, what note of encouragement or um, care would you give them? Well, I would encourage them not, not to be afraid, first of all. Uh, you know, the, the, all of society seems like is full of anxiety and worry and fear right now, but uh, just remember the, the, the Bible tells us over and over again, 365 times the Lord tells us, do not fear. Do not fear. Paul reminds us in Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with supplication and prayer and thanksgiving, make your request known to the Lord. And I, and I tell you that, that verse right there really spoke to me while I was in the hospital because I was so anxious. I was so worried. I was so uh, full of just anxiety, not necessarily fear. I never, I never worried about dying. I, <laughs> my doctor told me the week afterwards, he said, man, your numbers were so bad. If you weren't in decent shape, you'd be dead by now. Wow. And that, that woke me up big time. But in the process of it all, I never really worried about dying because, you know, I just felt like the percentages were on my side. And, and for anybody who's going through this, man, that's, that is really the truth. You, the percentages and the and the uh, the all likelihood of you getting through this is very very high. Yeah. Um, and so don't don't fear. There there are some cases where people obviously have died and and it's very difficult. And my heart goes out to those people and their families because I understand what they're going through. But uh, 
by and large, most people, we, we really don't let fear overtake you. Instead, uh, like Paul said, just, just come to the Lord. Yeah. And, 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 and one thing that really spoke to me about that verse was his phrase, with thanksgiving. And I just kind of just decided, you know, after I got over my anger and frustration with the Lord, I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to start thanking the Lord in advance for healing me. Mm. I'm just going to thank him every day for healing me. I don't know when it's going to come, but I believe he's going to do it. And I'm going to thank him in advance for doing it. And yeah. so I just started praising the Lord for his healing hand before it even came. And, you know, that brought so much peace to my heart. And it brought so much uh, life back into me um, because the mental aspect of this thing is really quite, yeah. uh, it can be pretty damaging. So I would just encourage those people that might be listening, that might be facing it or worried about getting it or whatever. Don't fear, take it to the Lord, trust him, trust his healing hand and thank him in advance for how he's going to pull you through this thing. Yeah, absolutely. Amen to that. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk with me. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Congratulations on the record. And uh, and we're we're so happy to, to see you coming through this finally. Thank you, Trey. Thanks for having me on today, buddy. Yeah, absolutely.